So I've got a slim glide roller door um, and it was making weird noises at me. It was beeping at me the other day and um, yeah, I thought it was broken. And um, I looked in the manual and the manual said, oh yeah, if you're getting four beeps, which is what it was doing, it means that the, uh, the potentiometer is broken. And God, I don't know what a body potentiometer is. It sounds serious. So I thought I'd have to get a dude in or a dudette to that knew what they're doing to fix it. But um, then I did some investigation and um, I figured out that um, no, when the manual says four beeps and it actually says four short beeps, what I was actually getting, I believe, was four long beeps, which is something completely different that the actual manual doesn't cover. So yeah, my door was you know, beeping on the way up and stopping, and then you press the button again and it'll move up, up a bit further and then stop and beep some more. Um, should have figured it out that, um, yeah, that you can adjust what they call the safety reverse force adjustment. So um, it uh, means it doesn't, you know, get stuck when there's a little bit of force. I don't know why it needed to change, because it's been working for years and years with that adjustment, but I adjusted it from three to four, and that fixed my problem. Um, this is an ET30 model that I found the manual for, Slim Glide Roller Door. I'm just gonna make this YouTube video to uh, show you how I actually fixed that, so I didn't have to get uh, someone in. Okay, here's a standard disclaimer. Um, yep, yeah, I'm not a qualified uh, garage door mechanic, so um, just take this information with a grain of salt, and I'll also read you from the other manual. This manual is only used by those who are qualified to carry out the installation. No given information this menu in this manual can be considered of any interest to the end user. Pfft. Well, yeah, I don't know about that, but anyway, yeah, not my fault if you break your door or, you know, crush your kid, or, um, yeah, ruin your car, whatever. But, um, yeah, I think being able to adjust this uh, setting is quite handy. So here's the manual on how to do set the reverse force adjustment. So, yeah, you press the set button and hold it until the uh, three displays in the, in the display, and then you release it, and then you can uh, change the setting up or down with the up or down button. And then you press the set button again to set it. So um, that looks simple enough. And uh, here is me trying to do that and um, getting very frustrated because oh, I can't get it to stop on the uh, on the three setting. It just goes one and skips over two, which is normal, and then briefly displays three, and then it goes to four. You can't stop it on three, which is uh, very frustrating. Yeah, I just had some major frustrations with it um, and I've now I've realized what was going on so this is uh, going to be maybe a good lesson. So if, look in the manual, you want to adjust the, uh, the reverse force adjustment, you hold the set button down until three appears and um, it, uh, when I first did this it was all fine, I held down set and it went from one, it skips two and goes to three and then you release the set button and you're on three and then you can adjust the, uh, the, the reverse force setting. And um, I adjusted my reverse setting up from three to four. Um, and, uh, but now it's coming down here and seeing if I can demonstrate this for my YouTube fans, ha <laughs> ha. Um, and I was trying to uh, you know, hold the set button down until it went to three. And um, so I hold, hold, hold it down and it goes from one and then it skips to very quickly has three and then goes to four. I'm going to try again and again. I can't stop it on three. But what I've realized is that what's going on is you hold it down, it starts on one, it skips over two and goes straight to three, and then you release it on three, and then goes, okay, you're in the force uh, mode now. I'm now going to display what force setting you've got. And I had changed the force setting to four. If you understand, so I'd uh, hold it down, it goes from one, skips two, and goes to three, and you release it on three, and then it says, it's in the force setting mode, I'm gonna display for you what the current force setting is, and my current force setting was four, and that confused the hell out of me, I didn't, f couldn't figure out uh, how to get it into, th into mode three. So yeah, that's the half 11 they talk about in the manual, and um, that's the sort of, uh, you know, standby, so that's when your thing's in a good state. And it's going up and it will go down 
and I've got the four setting on three at the moment. So if you hold the set button, one, skips over two and goes to three. And then now it will be displaying off oh, your current force setting. And if you want to now, you can up, change your force setting, push it up. There we go. I've got an hour force setting of four. This is what I did before. I, it, was, it was jamming and I changed it to four. And then you just press set again and, um, and it goes back into standby mode. So I'll show you again. Yeah, uh, to change it, you press the set button, hold, press and hold, and it goes one, then skips over two, and then goes out to three, and then when you release it, it goes to four. And you think you haven't got the setting, that you're, you don't think you're in mode three, but you are actually in mode three. That is the current four setting displayed there. Let's make it, let's make it one, and let's see if we can replicate my door jamming issue, just so you can hear what the noise is. Hmm. Yeah, well there we go, I sort of faked it. That's the noise it was making before. Sounds like three. I thought it was four beats before when it went up. I had this issue. It must have just been a cold morning or something weird because even that's this low setting of two, or we could just say one even. It's not jamming anymore. Yeah, so, well actually after I fixed that problem then I had the door was only going half, you know what, not completely closing, it was had a little gap at the, bro at the bottom, so I had to reset the travel limit setting as well. So this is some bonus material on how to do the, uh, the door travel limit setting. So if you look at the manual it says to um, pull the manual release lever down so you've got the door can sort of operate in manual mode and then it says to raise the door up and then raise the door down and then push the uh, the lever back into the non-manual mode. I'm not really sure what that bloody well achieves. So anyway, in my version here where I've done it, I've actually, um, I, yeah, I've actually got the door in the, in the setting number one and then I do the manual up and down. And then And then I put the uh, it back into uh, into automatic while it's already on number one. But in the in the manual it says to do that and then hold the set button until it gets to number one. Don't think it makes any difference. Um, I've already held the button on the the set button until number one appears, and then I raise the door up by holding the uh, up button until it gets to the point where I want the maximum height for it to be. And then I press the set button again and it moves to number two. Then you press the down button until the door gets to the bottom where you want it to be. And then you press the set button again and then it goes into this mode that does a whole cycle. It goes up and back down again just to demonstrate that it's working properly. And then it goes to the uh, to the standby mode with the, the half eleven.